Well, hello, everybody. I have been to the Maldives more than 20 times. And you may find it hard to believe, but my first visit to the Maldives was actually for work. I had spent more than half my working life in software companies and wanted to do something more meaningful. And that more meaningful happened to be solar energy. So at the time, I was working for a solar energy company and took a two-day trip to the Maldives, because obviously known for its sunshine. So why not try solar energy there? Well, most of you probably know the Maldives as the paradise that it is and would go there for holidays. And I can definitely recommend it. Here are a few images on video to um, get you in the mood. But there are other things to know about the Maldives than that it has fantastic beaches, great marine life, really friendly um, people, a uh, great place. One thing to keep in mind is that the Maldives are actually bigger than you might think. The total area of the Maldives is almost the same as my home country, Austria. So they're 800 kilometers long. But only 1% of that area is actually land. If you can, as you can see in the picture, the islands are really, really small and they are very far apart from each other. And what this means is that there is no national electricity grid. It would simply be far too expensive to, con to connect these islands with underwater cables. So what do you do if there is no electricity grid? Where do you plug in your power cord? Where do you charge your laptop? Well, the answer is these islands make all their electricity independently themselves, and they make them with diesel generators. Why is this a problem? Well, for a number of reasons. First of all, diesel generators emit a lot of CO2, roughly the same as coal. Now, the Maldives, I've, I've been to the highest point of the Maldives. I've got a picture of myself. No, I will spare you that picture now. The highest point of the Maldives is four meters. So the Maldives are the lowest lying country on Earth. In other words, when sea levels start rising more, the Maldives are among the first th to be affected and the worst to be affected. Yet, they're still relying heavily on a power production method that comes with a lot of CO2 emissions. So that's one thing. But there's another thing on top, which is diesel electricity is around five times more expensive as, than other sources of electricity, like coal or water power. So that means there's a huge amount of money spent in this small island nation simply to keep the electricity running, which is required for hospitals, for air conditioning, for work, for everything, you name it. And as a result, the Maldives import more than 400 million liters of diesel fuel every year. In the year 2014, more than 20% of their entire imports were just fuel. And if you compare that to a country like Austria or Germany, that's twice the share of imports of fuel. So even though it's such a relatively um, uh, non, not industrialized nation, they just consume a lot of fuel and most of this is just for electricity. So um, you would probably think there's an obvious answer to that. I mean, that country is world famous for sunshine and for a reason. You've got more than 300 entirely sunny days in the Maldives. So why not just use solar power? It's abundant, it's there, and it's even cheaper than diesel power. Well, there's another thing to consider. So you think, how hard could it be to do solar energy? Please take a look at this island. The Maldives host more than 150 hotel resorts, and this is one of them. These hotel resorts are home and workplace to 500 or more people, and they are entire cities. They have restaurants, they have their own water desalination plant, they have their sewer, water sewage treatment plants, uh, they even have their medical stations, every, you name it. And as a result, they burn 5,000 liters of diesel every day. Now, would it not be tempting to replace part of that diesel with solar? Yes, but guess what? 
in order to replace that amount of diesel, you just need huge amounts of solar power. And that takes space. For example, this island, if you want to power it during the day, during the sunshine hours, exclusively with solar power, you need an area that's bigger than the island itself. Okay? So that's simply not possible. Here's another image that shows you how valuable space is in the Maldives. Because it's so scarce, the Maldives actually create islands, they generate islands from sand artificially for people to live on. So if space is so rare, obviously you're not going to use it to put solar panels there as much as I love solar panels. I went home, back home from this um, two-day trip, and, then, and I'm not making this up. As I was practicing the violin, an image popped up in my head, and that image was of solar panels floating on the sea. And that is what our team, the SwimSol team, does. We provide floating solar energy systems. So what we do is, first, we use the available space on roofs on an island. But if that's not enough, and that's frequently the case, then we put the solar panels into the water. So we've created platforms that you can tow into the water. And because there is so much space, you have an unlimited amount of solar power at your disposal. The platforms are installed over sand, so not over the corals, because shade would affect the corals. So don't worry, <laughs> the corals are fine. They're uh, designed specifically for the Maldives, so they can withstand waves, they can withstand tides, current, wind, and also extreme UV radiation. Okay. So what do you say? Great, right? So we've got a country with a lot of sunshine. We've got a solution to power entire islands. So how hard could it be? Why not just do it? Well, steep learning curve ahead, as it was for us as well. So I want to tell you about a few challenges that working and living in the Maldives bring with them. And I hope you, that also helps you appreciate more what the Maldives have achieved as a really um, small island nation. First of all, I want to say that with this technology that we've built, um, we have so many systems installed that we are now saving over 4 million liters of diesel annually for the Maldives. But think about it, they use more than 400. So that's just 1%. So there's a lot more that we have to do. And that's not so easy. Look at this, for example. This is a boat carrying our solar panels to an island. So one big challenge in the Maldives is logistics, because, again, solar panels on the boat, right? Now, just bring them to the island, right? But how? Well, here's the thing. Um, on the island, they have jetties, so those wooden bridges that are used to carry stuff to the island. The only problem is, if you would put that many solar panels on them, they would simply collapse. They're not strong enough, okay? The pallets of solar panels are too heavy. So what we do instead is this. So we use what is called a high bed excavator that can drive through the sea and then it unloads the panels on the wall, uh, onto the beach. And if you think that's hard, then you have only heard part of the story. Because look at this, before we were able to um, even let the excavator get off that boat, the problem was that the, the flap that it has to use to come off the boat was too steep because the water was too deep. So we had to manually carry sand inside the water to make the flap, like, to make the flap go up so the excavator could go down onto the beach, which took us around six hours. So we had a huge delay and we had to work until well past midnight in order to actually offload the panels. So just one example. Another example. So I said before the Maldives has so much sun sunshine and that is absolutely true, but there are other weather conditions as well. This weather is rare, but if you have it, it's really, really hard to work. And you can get literally stuck on an island for maybe a week. Like your entire team could be there, you can't move. They might be waiting for you somewhere else or the material is not arriving where you need it and there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. So it's just really, really challenging to work uh, sometimes in the Maldives. Next thing, you're working on the beach. So what happens if you drop a few um, screws? 
You might say, well, not such a big deal. But here's the thing. If that's special screws, you cannot order them over the internet and they'll be there on the next day. <laughs> that just doesn't happen. You also cannot ride your bicycle to Ikea or to the next Bauhaus. They don't have that in the Maldives. You might have to hire a seaplane or a, a speedboat to take you 200 kilometers to the capital and get those screws. And that might take you two days and thousands of dollars. And that might not even be enough. You might actually have to get them from Europe or somewhere else. The point is, everything's harder there. And any mistake you make, like dropping screws into the sand, can have really, really big consequences. So even though it seems like solar power and all this thing, it's very, very nice. It's the natural thing to do. <laughs> Just think about what it means. Then there's another thing. Um, for hotels, obviously hotels need to get used to actually using solar power. So you would say it's a no-brainer, right? Because it's cheaper than diesel power and it's clean, so why not do it? But think about it this way. Their business or their task is to make their guests happy, to entertain their guests. And just think about you're sitting in a restaurant, cozy restaurant in your Maldivian island in the evening and all of a sudden the lights go out. You certainly don't want that, and you certainly don't want that if you're the manager of this five-star hotel that has promised their guests uh, a great experience. So um, I think we should be understanding that there is some reluctance on their side to, uh, to do new things. But here's what I want to share with you. Um, I, I want to introduce our team to you. So what you see here, that's our team on the beach. It's actually literally on this island that we've just um, seen before. And I want to show you our organization chart. It's a little bit different than the usual boxes you will find. We use as a metaphor for how we work together as a team. We use a whale shark. It's kind of the token animal of the Maldives. And the way it works is this. On the left hand side, you'll see the sales team. So the sales team gets the food for the whale shark, the new project. Okay. Whale shark needs the food in order to survive. Then in the middle, you have the technical team that builds the solar systems. And then you have green energy systems that also produce green backs, or known as money. So when the systems operate, we sell the power. And then on the right-hand side, at the tail end, you have the finance team. And it's important that the finance team is there because it's at the tail end. So the tail has to keep moving to propel the whale shark forward. Now, one thing I learned when dealing with all those difficult situations is to not judge people prematurely. A lot of things go wrong. You would also probably think, um, why is, has this country not, like we, we started 10 years ago, why is this country not using more solar power already? Why is this taking so long? Are people, I don't know, are they bad? You know, Maldives, do, do they not want to do something good? No. I would like you to keep in mind that when things get hard or when things look hard and, and you get upset because they're not happening or because somebody's doing something that makes you upset, um, just remember that things are usually more difficult than they seem at first sight. Um, and that's the first thing. Solutions are not always obvious. And one thing um, we try to observe in our team is the, the trust the trust in everybody's good intentions. So we're always on the same side. When you're with the whale shark, you're moving in the same direction. And you can trust everyone else in the team to also have the good intention to move the whale shark forward, to keep it alive. And I think most people actually have good intentions to do a good job, like to, do, to work for something that's good, even if it's just making money. Fine, that's their goal. They think that's good. So before judging someone, um, I would like to say that in all dealings, also especially between the Europeans and the Maldives, if something goes wrong, don't get upset, just trust. Most people have good intentions and most people have reasons for what they're doing, even if you don't know them or if you don't understand them. And it usually helps to just talk to them to find out what their reasons are before you get upset. So keep in mind, good intentions is key to keep up the energy. And uh, thank you very much. I would just like to show you one picture. That's the underside of our floating solar platform. So as you can see, our solar platforms do not only produce clean energy above the water in the sunlight, 
but they're also a new habitat for marine life underneath the water. Thank you very much.